It's time for Honestly, guys. It's just our opinion. Our 2024 season preview for 2023 second place team, the Broncos. Mm. Um, they, I mean, I was looking at them. I foolishly only did my research today. Totally forgot about it. That's fine. I was looking at them. They've got a lot of losses with very little gains for a team that got so close to winning a premiership yesterday. Um, yesterday, last year. Mm. Gaining only Fletcher Baker from the Roosters and Jaden Hunt from the Dragons. Yeah. But losing, like, and they didn't lose small players, like like fringe first graders or anything. They lost Kurt Capewell, Herbie Farnsworth, Thomas Flegler, Keenan Palacia, and Ethan Kai Ward. Um, Ethan Kai Ward, you know, okay, Keenan Palacia. It just gets worse as you, you go up that list. Like, Ethan Kai Ward, oh, Keenan Palacia, oh. Tom Flegler, what? Herbie Farnworth? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah, like, like I said, that's some big losses. Um, mm. They obviously got some re-signings with Corey Oates, the 18th man. <laughs> Pat Carrigan. Yeah, he seems to be on the outs a bit, doesn't he, Corey Oates? Well, that was the weird thing. Like, he was, he was 18th man or whatever, and he was like, I'm just happy to be 18th man. I'm happy to be in the team. And they're like, okay, that's, he's a good clubman, I guess. Yeah, John. I with the Broncos. I and one thing that I've, I've obviously done a fair bit of research on them going into our preview on their season today. And one thing that that wasn't pointed out in in a lot of the, um, I guess the the research material that I've looked at online. Um, I, I, I'm I'm sort of worried about how they're gonna how they're gonna respond to to the way their season ended last year. They had that. 24-8 lead with 18 minutes to go in the grand final and they bombed it. Mm. Um, it's it's the worst fade out that I can remember in a grand final. I mean, there are other tight finishes. Obviously, we think about 2015 Broncos-Cowboys, but that was a much closer game. I mean, it, I mean, the Cowboys won a tight one in that game. But, you know, the game was close the whole way through, so it wasn't the biggest surprise yeah. the Cowboys got up. We think about the 1997 grand final. Um, with Manly and Newcastle, obviously Newcastle getting up on the siren there with Joey Johns putting Darren Albert in for that try, and a lot of people talk about 1989. That's before my not before my time, but before my memory, John. I can't remember that one, but a lot of people talk about that. How the target Balmain bombed that against Canberra, but certainly in my memory, there's been no bigger fade out in a grand final than the Broncos last year against the Panthers, and, and what sort of psychological impact? Um, will that have on the Broncos going into this year, do you think, John? Well, you look at, um, speaking of those games, and thanks for not bringing up 1999, but 1999 is uh, a, Yes, that was one of, that I... A I clear looked. example, because 1999 was the beginning of the Dragons being labelled the Chokers. And they did lead 14-0, yeah. didn't they? Yeah, that's true. That's one that I forgot and about. There was no controversial circumstances as to how the try was a try, okay? Only an idiot thinks it wasn't. It was a penalty try, okay? <laughs> but but um, yeah. it took them years to get over like that yeah. as a club, mm. as a uh, culture, that choking culture. So it's a very good point you raise because, you know, like we discussed even like last week or week before, like, you know, 2005, 2006, the Dragons were like the best team as well. Parramatta won the minor premiership, but the Dragons got knocked out by... Tigers in Melbourne or whatever it was, they were meant to win. They were expected to win. They were the bookie favourites leading into the finals and they choked choked in both those games. They didn't really get over that until Wayne Bennett came along and changed mm. the entire culture of the club. Mm. Now, um, the Broncos have been forced to watch the match. You know, that was in the news. Mm. Kevin, Kevin made them watch, watch it. Um, he's... Uh, since he took over in 2021, when the Broncos were on like a downer, you know, <laughs> yeah. they had been been terrible for years. He in 2021, 2020, they were in the fi the finals, made got a fifth or something like that. But he took over in 2021, and they came tenth in his first year. And of course, it was instant. Kevy's going to get sacked. Then it was fifth and second. So he's built them up into. You know, I know it's only three years, but 66% of the time Kevy's been there, they've been finals appearers. But they could seriously become like the Dragons, the Chokers. For the, for the next 20 years, it could be like this, or 11 years, it could be this like thing where they're Chokers. So the mental games do come into it a lot, I think. 
Yeah, I think I think in 2022, did they? I think they were up there, but I think didn't they drop out? I'm pretty sure they might have dropped out of the eight that year and bombed out. Um, but um, 23, obviously they've come good. We can just double check how they went in 2022. Um, I'm pretty sure they were up there, but then faded out late. They were the fifth. They were fifth. Oh, um, sorry. But we can check. What in sorry, that maybe I'm thinking about 2021. Sorry. Yeah, I think 2021 be. might have been the year where they had a year where they were up there for the whole year and then faded out. Oh, yeah, and in, um, oh, God, pre-season challenge. They've, they're concentrating on the pre-season challenge. Oh, right, okay, so we'll go. Oh, the bloody. Yeah. So it's 2022. Um, and then go Broncos. Broncos. So, yeah, like they... Um, Oh, how do you see the final series? I don't know. This yeah, if you one. go, if you go, um, la- if you go ladder, mm. and then go, go twenty twenty two. Yeah, that's when they were. They were fifth in twenty twenty two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So twenty twenty one. So twenty twenty one might have been the year I'm thinking about. Sorry. So we. Can... Yeah, where they started well and then they faded out. I'm looking for a Broncos logo to appear in the top eight. Uh, 2021, they were out of the eight the whole time. Yeah, no, they didn't even... They just sat it... They ended up 14th. That was Wayne yeah, Bennett's. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, well, I guess the, that 99 grand final you're thinking about, um, the Dragons did have a 14-0 lead, but there was still time for the Storm in that game to come back. Mm. The, the Dragons took that lead early. And the Storm did have time in the game to come back. So even that I don't think is as bad as, um, you know, as the Broncos last year, that 24-8 lead and then losing the game 26-24. So anyway, let, let's hope that it doesn't have um, a lasting impact on them, John. Um, yeah. But they literally had that premiership stolen from them. Um, By Nathan the, Cleary. Yeah, yeah, That in the last they're, 18 minutes of the game last year. They're going to be playing... Dolphins, Titans, Storms, Cowboys, Eels, Panthers, Rabbitohs and Roosters twice. So Storm, Panthers, Roosters are the really big ones. And we've both got Cowboys, Eels and Rabbitohs in our eight. So, though, you know, it's got top eight teams ten times, but, you know, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So our suggested 2024 top eight, they'll be playing 12 times. Um, they begin the year, though, basically at home. <laughs> Um, seven of 12 games at the beginning of the year to open the year with only three top eight teams twice. Um, so they do have a long wait for their first buy. So they're going to have a long, long, basically a long opening. I think their first buy is in round 13. Um, and then they, they open the season in Vegas, obviously against the Roosters and then play Rabbitohs at home, Panthers away, Cowboys at home, Storm away, Dolphins at home. So they've got a pretty hard opening, actually, all mm. told, even though they are at Suncorp a lot. Mm. Their run to home, though, is is relatively, like, a lot simpler. It's mostly in Queensland. Yeah. It's all local derbies. So it's Titans away, Cowboys away, then a bye, then Eels at mm-hmm. home, Dolphins away, Storm at home. Mm. Um, so if they are, if you know, if they were struggling around the eight at the end of the year, I can see them. I mean, if they were competing for the eight, not all, like, dominating like they did this year. If they were competing for the eight, I can see them making it into the eight on the back of their run home anyway. Mm. So I, I have a feeling no matter what, no matter what we predict, no matter what anyone predicts, they're going to be in the eight um, in, in spite of their uh, possibility of having mental issues, the fact that they've got massive losses. Um, but I think like Kevy's been able to make the eight every year basically. Mm. So we only um, yeah. have two slots left each. Like I've got first Sorry. and third, and you've got second and third. Yeah, I will just um, I will just point out, John. I think in 2022 they did actually miss that. I think there's a bit of a problem with the NRL mm. website ladder. I've double checked elsewhere. They okay, did yeah. they did finish ninth in in 2022. I don't know why the NRL can't get their ladders right. I would have yeah, thought that's that bizarre because I think the one you were looking at was um, it had them fifth. Yeah, yeah, but it's um. And now it has them nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, because um, I think the one you had before it had round one there, so they were oh. fifth after round one. But they did finish. Um, they did finish ninth in twenty twenty. Yeah, he has but... made the finals three times out of four or whatever. Um, 
But yeah, like the. But anyway, yeah, I just thought I'd clear that up. But yeah, I mean, it's still a formidable team, John. I can run you through a predicted yeah, round yeah. one team. So we got Reese Walsh, Dean Mariner, Selwyn Cobbo, Katoni Staggs, Jesse Arthurs. Um, that's your back five, and then we got Ezra Mam and Adam Reynolds in the halves. Um, Adam Reynolds, who continues to come under fierce criticism from Gordon Tallis, of course, John. Yep. Um, Payne Haas and Fletcher Baker in the front row. Billy Walters at hooker. Um, Brendan Piakura and Jordan Ricky in the back row. Pat Carrigan, who, of course, got in a bit of a scuffle with his captain, Adam Reynolds, John. Which All sorted we'll now, mate. All sorted All now. All sorted out. Yeah, Pat Carrigan at lock, obviously. And then on the bench, we've got Corey Pakes. Kobe Hetherington, Xavier Willison, and Corey Jensen on the bench, John. It's, it's still a good team. It's still a very good team, yeah. Um, I was actually looking for my ladder because I can't remember how what I had them. <laughs> yeah, um, you, you've been through the the um, the ins and outs, obviously, yeah, John. Yeah. Um, Jordan Rickey's the only one who they're sort of a bit worried about health-wise with a shoulder, but he should be good to go for round one, John. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think um, Walters has indicated in the preseason that um, Selwyn Cobbo um, is going to be in the centres, um, replacing um, Herbie Farnworth, of course, who's gone to the Dolphins, I think we said. Yep. 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 Um, so now the attention sort of turns to the wing. Who goes to that wing spot now that Cobbo's gone into the centres? Um it, it looks like um, of Jesse Arthurs will be on one side. So it's going to be between Dean Mariner, the youngster, and Corey Oates, who we touched on, who struggled to Surely get a look Surely it's in. going to be Corey Oates, who was 18th man. Surely, poor Corey Oates. That's an ex-Origin player. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah, I, I just don't understand why, like, all right, it's gone on this long and he's still at the Broncos. I would have thought he... He'd get a gig at most other clubs, John. Yeah. I'd, I'd take him in a heart. Well, yeah. actually, no, our back five's looking pretty no. good now. I'd but, definitely take him. But, yeah, you'd take him at St George. There's a lot of clubs who would take him on for sure. Um, so, yeah, that that'll be interesting, John. You'd have to think – but you'd have to think, um, you know, Mariner, I, I th- I'd say – He's probably got the jump on Oates at the moment, just, yeah, well, just from the way they've, Oates can't they've get sort picked. of overlooked Oates in recent times. Oates can't John. get picked. It's so bizarre. And he's like, like I say, he keeps saying how happy he is just to be there and stuff like that. Like he doesn't want to leave and he's happy to just do whatever the team needs, be it 18th man. But, yeah, I'd, I'd take him at the Dragons in a heartbeat, you know, like <laughs> I just can't understand. There's a bunch of teams that would take him and I, maybe he just wants to stay in Brisbane no matter what. You know? Yeah, um... It's going to be interesting to see how they go um, this year, John. Um, yeah, I, I I think they'll be thereabouts again. I, I don't think I don't think these mental scars are going to be an issue in the regular season at all. Yeah, I think so. Um, and and I, I I don't think they'll be an issue in the early part of the final series. But I think if if they and I, look, I I've actually got them making. I've got them finishing second, John, and making the grand final again. But do do I think um, the way they ended last year in that grand final is it going to have an impact on them once they get there again? In my view, they will. I, I think that it will, John. I think that the scars, um, the, the the scars will be there. Um, I, I don't think this is a case of you often here. You got to lose one to win one with regard to grand finals, but that was a different sort of loss. That was, that was a loss that you just you'd rather, as I've said many times, John. You'd rather lose by twenty or thirty in a grand final than lose it like yeah. that. You'd rather never be in the game and have no chance. Yeah, well, especially because it was close, and then Broncos were clear, win, clearly going to win. Yeah, you know, it was close, and then the Broncos yeah. came on top and went, "No, we are the better team." And then Nathan Cleary said, nope, I'm the better player. So, yeah, yeah, he well and truly did that. Well, yeah, I think they're going to have something to prove all year and they're going to come out and bash everyone and prove that they deserved the win last year. And I have actually had to have them finishing one better and going the minor premiership. Okay. But the same as you, I don't think they'll win the premiership. I don't think they'll make the premiership. Um, mm-hmm. I think it will end up being Storm and Panthers in the end. In the, uh, in the grand final? Um, yeah, if it's yeah. possible with the ladder. I don't really know how all these things work. I think it is. Uh, well, obviously now we have both have Panthers at third. Yeah, um, yeah you, can slot that, you can slot <laughs> that in, John. Um, Process so, of elimination. So you got Warriors versus Broncos uh, first, second, and then I've got 
Broncos Storm first, second, and then both of us have Panthers third. Yeah. But that's pretty much it for the Broncos. Um, we did extensive information on them last year as well. But we do have to now discuss how we think the Panthers are going to go and justify why we both think they're going to go third yeah, and, yeah. and both think they're not going to make the grand final. Yeah, it's going to take, uh, it's going to take <laughs> some sort of justification, John. So on.